Just over two and a half years ago, Magnus and I decided that we probably should buy a sewing machine to fix sails when we were going to cross the Pacific, just to be safe. So we looked online and we came across this company called Sailrite and they seem to have a pretty good portable sewing machine. So we got in touch with them to see if we could partner with them and they were happy to partner. So we bought the sewing machine, we paid full price for the sewing machine and they said if you can do a review of the machine we will offer you vouchers for our products in the future. So this is our disclosure on this review. What follows is a video of when we got the machine when we were in Mexico in Chapas Marina and us setting up the machine using the instructions or not always using the instructions and then we talk about some of our first impressions at that time over two years ago when we first got it. Since then we have done loads of projects with the machine. We have fixed sales. Doing when? Um, using the sewing machine for the first time on sales. It's pretty cool. Oh, guinea pig sale. Can I start There's that guinea pig. My, foot, <laughs> my foot's hovering over the pedal. Righto. Go for a win. Just to get started, it needs to sort of get a bit of momentum. Look at that on the go. Yeah. Look at this professional guy. We've made cushions for the saloon, we've made cushions for the cockpit. So far I've made the two big base cushions. I've just got to hand sew that join up there. And now I'm working on the ones that connect in the corners. And lots of other little jobs for the boat. We've repaired things, we've made curtains, and we've also used it for altering clothing. It's mainly a machine for heavy fabric, but it will deal with lighter weights. You just have to adjust a few of the tension settings and it will work on lighter weights. But we bought it really for upholstery and for the sails. I'm a little bit excited. A little bit is actually an understatement. Here it is, the most beautiful box from Sailrite. I've got to try and put this thing together. It's got, uh, Magnus tells me it's a road case and he's seen hundreds or whatever and I've never seen one in my life. So apparently you do that. We've got to put the sewing machine, I don't know how these work. Oh, I don't know. Is that unlocked? Yeah. Oh, so they stay there. Yeah. And this handle drops back down. So that, I don't know. Anyway, all new to me. Oh, there it is. So that's where the sewing machine goes. Isn't that beautiful? So I've got to put it together. It's very heavy. I'll take the plastic off. Okay, plastic's off. Now, Wendy being the oh, super, so super organised person, you've read the, the Get Started manual, haven't you? No, you've got you. <laughs> oh, might need some help. It's too heavy. Okay, so Magnus has taken over because it's a little bit heavy for me. What are you doing? Well, now that I've read the manual um, for setting it up, which I should have done from the beginning, I've realised that you've got to undo these set screws so that they clear the holes before you put the pins in. Job now done. So we've successfully managed to put it on the base on the two pins. So it now looks like a sewing machine, although it needs some extra bits. There's a bit missing on this end. So we've un... are we running? Yeah, action. Got the machine on the base and it's looking really good. Now we've just got to add the last bits to here um, and the instructions say that there's a sewing machine head which is this the bag of tools which are here and a belt cover which is this and balance wheel so we've just got to fit this together next but we've got the monster balance wheel yeah we do so we can uh, run the machine without electricity as well which is one of the big reasons why we got this machine so we could do it at sea without power if we needed it. So that's the next step. This is, I believe, the regular, um, is that a balance wheel? Yeah. That's the regular balance wheel. And in here, 
we've got the UBU All Singing, All Dancing, Fancy Dancy Balance Wheel. So we're going to put this one on. Ah, so heavy. So that one's going on. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's the next step. Going to read the book. Yeah, the next step was to put the fan, the fan on, belt, the time, the belt onto there. Okay, so it's got to be around the small cog pulley of the idler pulley and between the bobbin winder stopper and the spool pin. Yep. Okay, we're happy with that. Remove the two screws located above and below the pulley drive. So that would be that one and that one. Okay. So we've done that, or we're no, I'm about do to that? do that. Okay. Okay. So just going to undo these. Does it say remove? Yeah, remove. Ah. Okay, don't drop them. That one and that one. They're not very long. Now I'm going to put the belt cover on. And that goes on here. So there's one screw at the top and one screw at the bottom. I'll put the screw in. Right, just turn up the little screw. Look at that. Easy peasy. And tighten this one. What are the instructions? <laughs> Removing this out of the way. I've, well, they called scrub these screws. Snub them. What's the word? Just, just Loose, loosely, loosely tightened. Move this out of the way. We're going to undo this, and it's like a gas bottle. It goes the wrong way. So it's right to undo. And then the next. Why is it the wrong way, then? Presumably so it doesn't come undone. Or you do it by mistake. No, it's because the rotation of the shaft. Um, a certain direction by depending on the direction of rotation you either have a left-handed or right-handed thread so that it won't undo itself oh. so it's the opposite of the yeah. machine okay slide the power plus balance wheel onto the posi pin wheel brush making sure the timing belt is over the top of the machine and to the left to the balance wheel you get all that? no <laughs> power plus balance wheel on there slide it on here I'm going to make sure that the... It's not the power plus balance wheel. Oh, what is this? That's the monster oh, one. Oh, we're putting the monster balance wheel on. Got to make sure this is clear. So that's on now. Thread the reverse threaded nut back and tighten by hand. So, got to do it backwards. This feels really strange. So that's now tight by hand. Yeah, we're getting there. Check to be sure the time belt is still around the small cogged pulley of the idler pulley. Down there. Yes. Uh, turn the balance wheel while guiding the belt into place around the large wheel from the inside, just like a bicycle chain. Okay, so we're turning that to get that on there, presumably. Right, other way there. Other way? Yep. That's because it's got arrows that tell you that way, <laughs> big arrows on the top. Okay, that looks good, I think. Rotate the balance wheel until a hole in the balance wheel is aligned with one of the four bushing holes. So through there, aligned. Okay, push the posi pin through the holes to lock the balance wheel to the bushing. It will spring back slightly. Rotate of the balance wheel will now cause the machine to function. So put that in. Yeah. Do we twist it or push it? As per the instructions. Push the posi pin through the holes to lock the balance wheel to the bushing. Is that it? No. Ah, oh, there we go. There. I think that's it. To disengage the clutch, we'll pull the posi pin out of the balance. So okay. Just check that it's engaged the machine, which it hasn't. It has. It's it's there down. We go. And yeah, then if we pull it out a bit, presumably that's when you do your bobbin. Yeah. Aha! So that's disengaged. And then if you flick that down, the bobbin should, should turn. There yes, you go. look at this. And then if we engage it. You've got to have it lined up to engage it. Oh, you've got it. Okay. There you go. Right, that's now engaged. Brilliant. So we've done all that. There you go. Whack on the handle. Whack on the handle. There. So open the smallest box in the so. shipment to find the accessories, plug the cord in. Doesn't say about the handle. No, no, that's a different instruction. Putting the handle on. With the Allen key. Have I got the Allen key the right way around? Yeah. Okay. Handle on. If you like, have everything straight, you, you better get a, okay. get a better um, bite at it. There we go. That's it. That's, that's on. Not the other end. No, it's not. You've got to put the other end in. Yeah. To get some tension. Yeah. Okay. Get some leverage on it. And How it. much? Now time. Enough. That's it. There we go. So that's in. Um. All right. So is it easy so far? Very easy. Yeah. It's going well. 
Right, plugged in. Nearly there. Mm. Plug in. What are you putting on now, Wayne? Eh? I'm putting on the spool pin, which is a little two inch bit of rod. That screws in there. And that's for home sewing. So you put your thread on there if you're doing home sewing with small bobbin, small spools, I suppose. And then the velvet protector goes on top of that. So that's good. It's actually threading itself yeah. into the timber. So it's quite a substantial mount. So now What's the next bit, when? Now we're going to put the um, thread holder thingy on this screw that Magnus has put in with this one and tighten it up and I guess you can adjust this yeah that looks good oh look at that so I guess you can put it away yeah when you want to so I won't do it too tight I think it's the hand screw isn't it so that's done we've now unpacked the little light there it is and this is how you put it on Ta -da! there you go and you can move it around to wherever you want it to go which is really cool Really cool, actually. Anywhere you want. Because you never know with a boat where the light's coming from. Let's see if it works. Yeehaw! That wow, works. That is a That's solid beautiful. machine. It's so solid. Everything is supersized and incredible. Like the, uh, what do you call this? The lift up. I don't even can't remember what that's called, called now. That's massive. Everything's strong. Look at this. Looking pretty good. So when you've put the machine together, yes, and did you find it easy or difficult? No. How did you find the assembly? It was good. The instructions were very clear, so it was easy to put together. So this is a bit like, you know, when you go to a peach, teacher and teacher, a teacher and parent um, interview, <laughs> and you ask the teacher questions, and yeah. the teacher answers them straight back, and then they wait for the next question. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so first impressions? First impressions are that it was, it arrived beautifully packed, so very securely packed. Everything was very neat, all the bits and pieces are clearly marked, every single bag has got a label, the machine is really heavy, it feels like it's made to last forever. It's metal, everything is metal, there's hardly any plastic on it at all. Um, very good first impression, solid, solid, solid machine, so I'm looking forward to uh, having a go at sewing with it. Very excited. And any cons? Cons? Uh, what are the cons? Not yet. Can't see any cons yet. And was the getting started guide easy to follow? Yes, if you read it, it's easy to follow. And if you, and if you looked at the pictures, was it e even easier? Uh, yeah, the pictures helped a lot. <laughs> so you've got to really read it and look at the pictures at the same time. Is and it, then it's fantastic. It's a bit like Ikea. No. No, Ikea's, Ikea would be missing the Allen keys. <laughs> so, was there anything missing when? No, nothing was missing. It's all here. And anything else you, need, you want to say? Anything else I want to say? At this moment, um, I think I've covered it all. We put it together. It didn't take very long to put it together. Maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes to put it together and get familiar with all the bits and pieces. Um, and now I'm going to read the manual a bit more on how to thread it. So that's the so, next step. Here it is. In all its glory. I just want to show you this though. Look at that. Look how thick that is. So that's its sewing sample. For one of the three. One of the three for different fabrics. Showing you the, here we go. This is, uh, looks like some umbrella fabric. And the stitches look very neat. And I'm not sure what that is. It, it's lots of layers, I think. Yeah, there'd be, I don't know, about one, two, three, four, four, eight layers there, I think. And that one's got about, that's just regular two layers. And this one looks like leather, or vinyl. Eight layers of vinyl. Yeah, it's good. And with the kit, the premium kit, you get um, a roll of thread, various guidebooks, a magnetic uh, guide, quick unpick, something to hold the thread, three specialised feet, so that one is a left roping zipper foot, this one is an outside ultra feed cording foot, 
This one is an inside ultra feed cording foot. Various needles. 16, 14, 20, 18. A lint free brush. Um, a, what's this one? This is uh, kickstand for the ultra feed sew machine this is a strap to protect your fabrics against the latches on the edge of the um, carry case I think and a beautiful one inch swing away straight binder foot I'm not sure how to use that but I'm sure I'll work it out and then there's a light that you attach to the side of the machine so they're all the things that I got in the kit the premium kit and then I ordered a few extra things for the projects we're doing. So I've got some double-sided sticky tape, which I think is quarter-inch quarter, quarter inch basting tape. A couple of threads, because I didn't want to run out. That's for the saloon here. I'm going to redo all that. Lots of uh, zip, whatever they're called, pulls. A load of zip itself, just continuous. A nice long fabric measuring tape. And I think that's the bulk of it. The rest of it's the machine. There's the beautiful carry case, which Magnus said reminds him of um, back in the day when he was being a roadie. Uh, for John Paul Young, I think. So that's it so far. I'd like to talk about some of the positive things about the machine that we like about the machine. So one of the main good things about the machine is it so sells, which is why we bought it. And it does that really, really well. Another important thing about it for us was that it would run without power. It has a monster wheel, which you can use to um, turn and that's your power for the machine. So it runs really well with that. It's portable. It is heavy, but it is portable. So you can move it around. You can um, fix a sail on a boat without having to take the sail off. So that's fantastic. When we were in Chappers, we helped some friends out. They had a boat with a very large mainsail and we actually lifted the sail right onto the boat and sewed it in situ. We just dropped the sail down and sewed it in situ. So here we are on a friend's boat. So sewing their mainsail up because we can, because we've got a portable machine now. So it's pretty cool, eh? So that's a massive bonus for us for this machine. It doesn't have any electronics, so that's less things to go wrong. It is solid and sturdy and well built. Most of it is metal. Uh, a few bits are plastic, but not many. It comes in two incarnations. You can get a 110 volt machine or you can get a 220 volt machine. We got the 110 volt because our boat at the time was wired for 110. Since then we have bought a step down transformer so that we could convert the machine to 240, 220. This is handy if you go on someone else's boat or you want to fix their sails or help them out. You've got the ability to change that. Sailrite do offer a conversion kit. It's more of a permanent kit, I believe, but they do offer one. So if you buy the 110, you can buy the conversion kit. And I think you need to, I don't know if it comes with a pedal or you need to buy a new pedal, but they're the things, the motor changes and the pedal, I believe, changes. So that's an option too. But we chose to make it so that we could go 110, 220 or 240 whenever we like. So we just bought the uh, step down transformer. The sewing machine comes with a light which is magnetic, it's separate. The good thing about the light being separate is that it's movable, it's magnetic, and you can move it wherever you like on the sewing machine or put attach it wherever you like on the sewing machine and you can shine it wherever you want, which is good for a boat because the light doesn't always come in from the same direction. So that's that's fantastic. I also use a separate LED which I attach under the arm of the sewing machine that just gives you more down light so that's quite handy and quite often I would wear a light on my head to give more light when working especially in the boat because there's not much light natural light in the boat. Sailrite is a great company to deal with it's very easy to order parts their website is very comprehensive their magazines are very comprehensive and catalogues are comprehensive there are lots of how-to videos so that it's very well supported and it's very easy to order online and the parts arrive really quickly. It has beautiful neat stitches 
and I have used other machines where the stitches are all over the place, different lengths, crooked, so this is just lovely. It also comes with this magnetic guide, which is very robust, very strong magnet, and I've used it heaps. And you can just put it wherever you like so that you get a straight edge. The needle position and the stitch width controls are very simple. They're just sliders that move across. Some of the negatives for the machine are the foot pedal. So the foot pedal is quite small, so it's quite difficult to sort of lean your foot on it. It's also quite lightweight, so it tends to slip across the floor, at least on the boat floor. It probably would be quite nice if it was slightly bigger and maybe heavier, but then maybe the reason it's not is so that it can fit in the carry case with everything. But what would be a good solution to that problem, I think, is if you put sticky feet on the bottom of it and then it wouldn't be able to slip. Speed control for the foot pedal is sort of off or on or very on. It's quite difficult to go really slowly. You do get used to it and you do get better at it, but it sort of makes your ankle ache a bit because you've really got to hold your foot up in the air because the pedal is so small. So that's a little bit of an issue. The light does have a negative side to it. It has its own separate power lead, so you do need to have two sockets to plug it into, and the lead itself can get in the way quite a lot. The lever to lift the foot is quite sharp, and if you sew for a long time, it can really start to cut into your hand. So Magnus came up with a wonderful solution to this, and he just put butyl tape on the end of it to make a knob. And that solved that problem perfectly. Sometimes the spool thread gets caught up with the power cable if you don't put the holder in quite the right place. So you just got to be careful where you put that and watch out that it doesn't get caught up when you're trying to sew. The stitch length indicator panel, that's what I'm calling it, is black. And when you're in a dark boat, it's often quite difficult to see the numbers. So what I suggest is to maybe use a bit of whiteout or something, Tipex or something, on top of the numbers so you can read them more easily. That's something that I think we'll be doing. The machine is heavy, but it is portable. And quite often I'll ask Magnus to lift it up onto the table for me. It's about 60 pounds, I think. Wendy's used the machine the most, so she knows it backwards. But I have made a few things. I've made a, um, a removable cover over the cockpit and a few other bits and pieces. So I'll give my a view of the machine. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the bad points. I don't know if Wendy's gone over these, but... Um, the worst thing about this machine is the foot lifter upper and downer. It, I ended up with a blister on my finger, so I got some ta rubber tape out, butyl tape, and wrapped it around and and built it up to give it a bit of a. I mean, I've got pretty tough fingers, but um, it uh, yeah, it was it's it was too little and it did it needed something on the end of it, so I wrapped a bit of tape on it. Good as gold, fixed it. The other thing that I really, really found difficult to get used to was the foot controller, the speed controller. Um, there's two speeds, flat out and stop. And I've used other machines and they're, they're linear. But this thing, it's, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. Just hear the motor starting and then flat out. And you sort of got a tiniest amount of wiggle room to get the right speed so I found that really hard to get used to and it's so lightweight everything about this machine is heavy and solid but the foot control is like a cheap throwaway it uh, it skates all over the floor whereas most foot controllers are nice and heavy and good rubber feet on them so they're the two main points that that I found hard to get used to. 
The Sailrite comes in a few options. There's the red versus the blue, which is straight stitch versus the zigzag and straight. It also comes in 110 volt for the American and Japanese market and in Mexico and all those other places. Um, or a 220 slash 230 slash 240 volt version, which is for most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand and all the other countries. So you've, it's got the world covered. You, if like us, we started off in a 110 volt country on a 110 volt boat, and we've now moved to a 240 volt country. Um, we could just order the 240 or 220 volt conversion kit, which is motor and foot control. And vice versa, if you've bought a 220 model, you can order the kit to change it over to 110. Easy to change, a couple of bolts being done. Um, we elected not to. We elected to keep it as a 110 volt machine and I purchase a step down transformer to suit which so we can now run it on 240 volts here in Australia 220 volts we can run it on 230 we can run it on 110 we can take it from a 110 boat to a 230 volt boat and if we decide to buy another boat in America or Mexico or wherever we can take the machine with us and it's good to go so we elected to do it that way but you can just get the conversion kit easier to change. Portability. It's a portable sewing machine. Um, it's a heavy portable sewing machine, but it is portable. Um, so you can take it from boat to boat. You can take it from home to the, to the, um, to the boat. You can take it from the boat to um, off space somewhere where you can lay things out. It's 100% portable. It's an industrial machine that's portable. And the best portability option you've got is you can take it to the sail on the boat. So we had a, we had a um, do a sail repair in for a friend of ours in Chiapas, Mexico, on their big 51 footer. And Chris said to me, he said, uh, yeah, it's a big sail, the main on this. So we started taking the main down and I thought, no, we don't have to take the main down. Let's just take the machine up, put the machine just under the boom, and we'll sew the sail. And we did. And it worked a treat. So that's how portable it is. You can actually take it to the sail um, up on the boat. So love the portability factor. She's a ripper. Spares and repairs. So when we first got the machine, we were a bit gung-ho. Um, flat out, sewing all sorts of stuff and hitting brass... Um, grommets and plastic things and bending needles and putting needles through the plates and and bending the needles so they actually went into the bobbin holder majiggy um, and bending all sorts of stuff. It's a solid machine and to bend things you've got to be doing something really wrong and I was and Wendy had a couple of moments as well. We slowed down and realised we our mistake. You don't go a million mile an hour when you're going straight up to something solid, solid like brass. You slow down before you, your needle hits it. We broke a few little pieces that are, I think they might be designed to break so you don't break the whole drive mechanism. Um, they're not quite sacrificial, but um, because if the needle... If that needle didn't break as it went into something, it, yeah, it would cause all sorts of problems. So anyway, we broke a couple of little tiny pieces. Luckily, we had spares. Um, we bought a spares kit with it. Or did it, I don't know, I can't remember if it came with a spares kit or we bought it, a spares kit. But um, the spares saved us. Then I watched a video and it told me what not to do and... and it also told me how to fix what I'd done because it must be a mistake that a lot of people make. They're just too gung-ho. Um, and the videos are just crazy good. They're, I wish I could make a video as good as they can because they've got videos for everything. Like, if, for everything. 
So, and if they haven't got a video for it, just give them a call, they'll tell you how to fix it. So, spares are easy to order, they arrived in like a week from America to Mexico. Um, and getting things into where we were in Mexico usually took like three weeks, but it's quick as. And even now in Australia, we bought some things from Sailrite, quick as for the machine. Day one, putting the thing together. Um, the instructions, well, I, I must have been, I didn't read the instructions. I just started putting it together. But I should have, because there were a couple of things that were really difficult, like these little screws you had to get in. Have a really, I mean, you got this, the supply screwdriver. Why not make it a magnetic screwdriver? Because the little screws, if you could stick them to the end of the screwdriver, it'd be really easy to put together. So for a couple of dollars, um, a magnetic screwdriver would have been, I ended up using my own magnetic screwdriver. Otherwise, um, I mean, it's heavy. Like, it's heavy. But that's not a, that's not a con, that's a, that's a good thing. It doesn't move around on the bench at all. Uh, it is heavy, like, I'd hate to be um, a weakling trying to lift this thing up off the ground onto the table because it's heavy. But that's a that's a, is a good thing. So anyway, now we'll get to the good points. Man, it's powerful. It can rip through like eighteen layers of of sailcloth. It just it's got that much power. It just snaps needles if you if you're not careful with it. And it'll, I'd hate to get my finger through there because I reckon it'll rip straight through that. Uh, it's, uh, the forward reverse controller is like changing gears on a locomotive. It's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. Like, you can't not hit reverse. Um, threading it, piece of cake. It's one of the easiest machines I've ever had, of you've ever run the thread through. Um... Positive is it's heavy, and it's strong, and it's solid, and it's easy to oil. Like other machines, they've got these tiny little places you've got to put your oil, and this thing is made to service it, uh, and you've got to make sure you keep servicing it because it, it'll get noisy and jump all over the table if you don't keep oil up to it. It's it's an industrial machine. Um, it's amazing. And you find stuff as well, like if you're sewing just normal um, cotton or lightweight canvas, it does that beautifully as well. You've got to make a few adjustments, especially once you've got to get used to the bobbin tension versus the needle tension. Like on a zigzag, all of a sudden it'll pull through one way and pull through the other way, and it takes a bit of bit of manipulating and fine control work, but that's not a real con. It's just something that takes a bit of practice. Um, the walking foot. Wow, you don't have to push or pull material. It just grabs it and rips it through as fast as you can. The only other con that I should have bought up was the light that comes with it. Um, the light's good. It's a long, flexible bright it's got a flexible end it's magnetic but the cable i mean you should just plug into the back of the back of the machine um they should have a socket for it to plug into the back of the machine because you've got a you got this other cable you got to and then you've got to find a double adapter to plug it in because anyway the light wasn't really thought thought out that much yeah, i like it because it's on a boom and it's magnetic and you can move it around but yeah it should just plug into the machine a little 12 volt socket plug it in fantastic machine pretty happy it's an expensive machine um but you get what you pay for you pay a fair bit for this machine and you get a lot of machine yeah i can't really think of anything else bad there are so many good points but I've just highlighted the main good points. So, uh, I'm pretty happy with using it. Apart from lifting it off the floor onto the table, because it's heavy. The case that it comes in is is um, rock solid too. It's a great case and you and it protects it. Because on the boat, a few times, well, I'll tell you a story, right? When the, as some of you know, 
well, those who don't watch our regular channel might, won't know this, but we had an explosion on board. And this sewing machine was sitting inside its protective box underneath the table I'm sitting at. Now, when the explosion happened, all the floorboards ripped up. You can see all the indents in the ceiling here where all the floorboards went into the ceiling. Now, the sewing machine was on one of the floorboards. So it went up. And there's a big indent underneath the table of the corner of the sail right box hit that. So the sewing machine hit the table, ripped the table off its, um, off its mounts, these eight big stainless steel screws then the sewing machine embedded itself in the ceiling uh, which is six and a half seven feet up then smashed back to the ground not a scratch on the box so it has survived a category nine explosion so that says a lot for it. it's solid the beautiful box uh, reminds me of when I was a roadie in my younger days, uh, lugging road cases around. That's what it is. It's made out of a road case. I mean, they handle anything. So magic box, mag magic everything. It's great. The instructions are unreal. The guys you deal with at Sailrite right, uh, really cool. They they uh, they know what you're talking about. You ring them anytime. You say, hey, I've got a problem with. When I originally had the problem with the getting the foot tension versus the um, needle tension all. Right, I gave them a call and yeah, they sorted it out for me real quick. They said we've got a video on that, it'll show you how to do it. They pointed me in the right direction, job done. So now I'm just rambling. Good machine, a couple of little points that I don't like, especially the foot switch, like sort it out. Just have a nice linear one that goes like from zero, slowly 10%, 20%, all the way through to 100% with your foot down. Because you don't need this machine at 100%, because it's so fast. Um, I'm not an experienced sewer, um, so I can't do 100%. I only like about 50%. But anyway, now I'm rambling. See you later. Ciao. Well, I remember one other thing I love about the machine is you don't need power. If you're stuck without power, something's gone wrong on the boat, you need to do sail repair, you just put it in manual and crank the handle and it still sews. So you can get out of trouble that way. I uh, made a few things using, just using any manual mode. First time I did it just to see if I could do it. And yes, it's a little bit slower, but yeah, I made a nice air scoop for the hatch, a few other little knickknacks, and uh, it works an absolute treat in manual mode. And it's worth getting the magnetic stick-on um, guide. I think they're an option. Um, yeah, I think they're an option. And it's worth getting because for someone like me who has trouble keeping anything straight as I feed it into the or as it goes into the machine, the little guide makes it so easy. And, um, yeah, yeah, so that's the, that's all I've got to say about the machine. It's a loving, so yeah. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful, and see ya.